Children's literature is full of a plethora of great stories, but so can literary magazines, which might also be a great way for an indie author to put out his or her work and help coordinate the publication and promotion of other writers that they know. There is a rhyme and a reason, especially when we begin looking at rhyming poetry. I'm your host, Garrett K. Jones, and welcome to the December edition of The Right Way. Back to the right way where we talk book recs, author interviews, and creative writing tips. If you haven't already done so, please make sure to click the subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications on new videos just like this one. I have a great episode for you as we wrap up 2023, but before we get into the details, I have a few announcements for you that I'd like to share with all of you back home. I wanted to first share what is going on with the 2024 writing workshops at the Kings County Library. The library is in the process of revamping and restructuring their weekend classes, and while they are doing that, classes will be on hold at least until March, but hopefully sooner. I am planning on doing some springtime workshops, and as soon as I know dates and times, I will share that information with you guys. Normally, uh, and this is the second announcement, uh, normally the live stream drops one week after the regular monthly episode, but with the way that this month is shaping up, uh, the December live stream will be on hold until Saturday the 30th, as mentioned in the video from two weeks ago, uh, to provide a breakdown of what to expect going into the new year. I'm looking forward to it, and I hope that you are too. So, with that said, let's get moving into the rest of this month's episode, because I've got some great stuff for you. For this month's top 10 list, I have invited back children's author Chris Weimer as my guest host. Chris is an elementary school teacher who uses her writing to help educate kids. I'm really eager for you guys to see her recommendations. Hi, I'm Chris Weimer, author of Wally's Misadventure and Wally and Friends Go to Camp. Here are my 10 favorite picture books. Number 10, Too Much Glue by Jason Lefevre. It's a hilarious tale of a little boy who gets stuck to his desk with a bunch of glue. Number nine, Dragons Love Tacos is a spicy story of dragons who eat tacos of all sorts by Adam Rubin. Wait until you see what happens when they eat spicy tacos. Number eight, Underwear by Mary Elise Monzel. This story will have you rolling on the floor as you follow Bismarck Buffalo's attitude change from grumpy to absolutely fastidious. Number seven, Ada Twist Scientist. Do you have a little one that's always asking questions? In Audrey Beattie's book, you'll discover her parents' plight as she asks tons of questions. Number six, The Word Collector by Peter H. Reynolds. Jerome collected words of all kinds and added them to his pile of scrapbooks. Peek inside to see what happens when they are all scattered. Number five, The Velveteen Rabbit by Marjorie Williams is a classic British tale of loneliness, love, loss, and forever friendship between a boy and a bunny. Number four, I'm So Glad You Were Born by Ainsley Earnhardt. It is a celebration of each and every child, and there are multiple possibilities. Number three, The Mitten 
by Jan Brett. It's filled with exquisite illustrations and a heartwarming story of woodland creatures who cram themselves into a mitten one cold winter day. Number two, The Three Trees, retold by Angela Elwell Hunt. You'll follow the hopes of three trees and then their devastation when their dreams are dashed. But something wonderful is around the corner. You'll have to find out what it is. Number one, The Crippled Lamb by Max Lucado. This story will warm your heart and soul. Joshua Lamb can't walk like the other sheep can. One day, they go to another field, and Joshua is left behind with Abigail Cow. Joshua is sad, but that night, a miracle happened. Wait and see what it is. Bye. A big thank you goes out to Chris for being this month's guest host. If you're interested in picking up one of the books mentioned in her segment, you can find that list of titles and their ISBN numbers down in the video description. So most of the authors I've interviewed over the last few years have been publishing books, sometimes anthologies. This month I interviewed a self-publishing author who uses his venue to publish a quarterly magazine full of original short stories written by him and other authors that he knows. So please join me in welcoming Ben Sheridan. Hey Ben, thank you for joining me on the show. Please tell me about what it is that you write and, and the work that you have developed as an author. Hey Garrett. All right. So me and myself, I have two kind of projects going. One is for me as a person, which is under uh, Ben Sheridan Writing. And the other, our more uh, flagship project is Fun Employment Press. And Fun Employment Press so far has put out uh, three quarterlies, which we're trying to do on a quarterly schedule, but that's insane. So now we just pull it all together and release it. And yeah, and we also have a tabletop RPG, um, which has recently come out in the last few months, uh, which is based around bowling. Me, myself, I mostly write and release uh, short stories, either through the quarterlies themselves. I try to sneak in uh, one every issue or through um, the Cream Scene uh, magazine has also released a few. A fun employment press is mostly for other indie authors trying to get their their name out there and yeah. you submit and you publish as a part of a magazine. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's, it's more it's like a not a magazine. It's like um hardbound and all that. Well, soft cover bound, but looks like a book. And yeah, it was just me and a few friends of mine and we were deciding, you know, we should probably just do this and then we have and it's gone uh, really really well so far. Awesome. And, <laughs> yeah. It's fun. You get to press gang every single person you know into buying a copy of the book for one reason or another. And um, yeah, it's really been a joy and it's been great meeting people through it and talking to people and kind of finding a little community online. So how did you get into writing? Was this something that you've always wanted to do or was this like you just woke up one day and you're like, I need to put myself out there? It's something I've always wanted to do for sure. Um I always liked reading when I was a kid. It took off for me big when I was about seven. And then, of course, uh, naturally, once you read enough, you want to start writing a bit. So, obviously, science fiction has been a an inspiration for you. Uh, mm -hmm. What are some other inspirations that you have drawn from as a writer and as a creator? Fantasy, of course. You know, some people read one, some people read the other. But I'm agnostic. You know, if it's a good piece of literature, it's a good piece of literature. And... Um, Personally, I would say kind of like um, surreal literature was big for me when I was younger. Like um, I never pronounced his name correctly, but um, Thomas Pynchon mm -hmm. and Franz Kafka, they were huge. And then also when I was a little younger, not as young as that, I really got into um, like weird lit, I guess you'd call it, like China and Mielville and like Michael Sisko and just a whole bunch of writing communities online where people weren't as nice as they are these days, but you know, you kind of hone your craft on it. So what has been one of the hardest parts or one of the biggest challenges that you have faced in the creation of your work, whether it's your short stories or 
Funployment Press? Sitting down and actually doing it. <laughs> carving out the time, carving out the energy, and carving out the motivation. Of yeah. those three, time, energy, and motivation, which one was the hardest for you to carve out? Probably at the end of the day, uh, energy. I took a bunch of creative writing classes in 2015 before doing boring computer stuff, which I do now as work. And then after college, right, you're working 10 hour days, you're working through your weekends, you know, a million things happen. And then before you know it, at the end of the day, you're just exhausted. And uh, life never really relents. No. <laughs> it gets different. You have a kid, you have to keep working. And at the end of the day, sometimes you're just feeling a little too you know, burnt out or crisped up to get around to it, but it's carving out the time to at least read and hopefully write. That is a challenge, but you got to do it. So if you could give any advice to other would-be authors, what would you say to them? Read consistently, write consistently, and don't underestimate yourself. The problem I've had with motivation is I'm my own worst clinic of my own worst critic, of course, and I feel a lot of people are. And when I uh, was done with a writing group in college and I'd write things outside of that and I would submit them and I get rejection letter after rejection letter after rejection letter. And, you know, it's demoralizing. Of course it is. It's demoralizing for anyone. But if you keep practicing and you keep working on it, eventually you're going to produce things that are tangibly good and people agree with that. So even if what you think now what you think you're writing now is subpar, like just keep working at it and you're going to improve. The last uh, several pieces I published as myself um, were actually like eight to 10 years old. And I went through them with a fine editing pen that's been honed by years of experience and really sharpened them up and sent them off to editors and people loved them, right? So if you stick with practicing and you stick with consistently, you know, reading and writing, even things that you thought were so par when you write them from your younger years, if you go through them when you're more experienced, often you'll find there's little gems in there. Well, Ben, we're coming up to the last question. How can people get a hold of you? How can they get a hold of Funployment Press or any other uh, short stories that you have out there? All right. So um, I keep meaning to set up a vocal, but I don't believe I've done it yet. <laughs> and uh, we're on Instagram as uh, Fun Employment Press. And I personally am on Instagram as Ben, B E N underscore Sheridan, S H E R I D A N uh, underscore writing. I assume there'll be links in the caption. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Ben, it has been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you for joining me. Thanks, Garrett. Appreciate it. If you're interested in picking up copies of Ben's work or connect with him through social media, you can find those links down in the video description. We're jumping back into our deep dive discussion into poetry. Last month we discussed odes and meditation, which were used for focusing on or upholding a person, event, or object in some kind of high regard. Odes especially were kind of like songs of love or worship with a tradition going back to ancient Greece. Meditations, on the other hand, don't come from any one specific uh, culture or language. They, uh, they're used for practicing written train of thought about the subject that is the focus of the poetry. This month, we're exploring rhyming poetry. Now, before we can jump into the poetry itself, we need to understand what rhyming is. Rhyme is a, as a noun, is a correspondence of sounds between words or the ending of words. Case in point, the ending of balloon rhymes with moon or soon or the month of June. And when using rhyme in poetry, it's important to apply a rhyme scheme, which is the pattern in which rhyme is applied at the ends of lines and stanzas or uh, within the poem. Uh, but before we can talk about our rhyme scheme, we need to know the different kinds of rhymes that exist. So we're dealing with six different types of rhymes. First up, we have the perfect rhyme. A perfect rhyme or an exact, full, or true rhyme 
takes place when both words share the exact same sound and the same number of syllables, like moon and soon. The second type of rhyme is called slant rhyme. Uh, the words end with a similar but not identical sound and or number of syllables. These can also be called half imperfect or near rhymes, like with the words squirrel and girl. Face the wrath of squirrel girl. The third type of rhyme is called an I rhyme, which is where you have two words that look similar on the page, but do not actually rhyme when they are spoken, like move and love, or hour and poor. The next kind of rhyme is a masculine rhyme. <laughs> the rhyme itself happens in the final syllables of the words within two lines in the poem, such as in follow and below. Both words end in low in their final syllable. If there's a masculine rhyme, then there must be a feminine rhyme. The ladies get extra in the best way with this type of rhyme because both syllables in, the, in a pair of words of two given lines have the same sound and the same number of syllables, like crazy and lazy. What? Just to be clear, that's not a commentary on women. It's a commentary on rhyming, not anything else. You know what? Moving on. Our last type of rhyme is called end rhyme, where the rhyme specifically occurs at the end of a pair of given lines. End rhymes can be either masculine or feminine. The other types can actually come in at any other point in the lines of poetry, but this one must come at the end of the lines. Otherwise, it doesn't live up to its name. Now that we know what our rhymes are, let's take a look at our rhyme schemes. You have alternating rhyme, uh, which is what most people think of when it comes to rhyming. The pattern is usually A, B, A, B. But you can also have uh, an enclosed rhyme, which is A, B, B, A. Triple rhyme, which would be A, A, A. Mono rhyme, where every line ends with the same sound and syllable. And then there is Vianel, which goes as follows. A, B, A for at least the first five stanzas. And the last stanza finishes with A, B, A, A. Uh, for the sake of today's prompt, we are only going to focus on alternating rhyme scheme. Here's an example taken from my book, The Lover, The Fighter, and The Philosopher. The monkey did it. While lying on my bed to see what I could dream, I thought I saw a monster staring back at me. It looked like a monkey wagging its index finger, with a look of anger on its face as it ate a hostess singer. He made a mean horrific sound, he grumbled and he squealed, and threw a banana at me that hadn't been fully peeled. It hit my face and the monkey jumped onto my back to fight. He punched and clawed and I think I got a gnarly monkey bite. I tried to throw him off of me, but his tail was rather agile. It wrapped around my wrist and threw me into a laundry pile. I cowered and I hid. I started going fetal. And then the monkey began to leave because I poked him with a sewing needle. So if you see a monkey hiding in your college dorm room, make sure you have a sewing needle for defense. It will save you from monkey doom. This fight was an adventure, and I can only sigh with relief because this poem, it helped me write. This month, I'm actually going to give you the prompt before we go over the tips that I have for writing rhyming poetry. For your poem, I want you to write an alternating rhyme scheme, that's the ABAB, with at least 10 to 12 lines using end rhyme for each of your lines. Your subject should be about Christmas or whichever winter holiday your family celebrates. And be sure to remember the following tips when working on your prompt. Tip one, use a common rhyme scheme. I've already given it to you, so that should be a cinch. Tip two, don't be afraid to experiment with other poetry forms. If you want to use an ode style or haiku, go for it. Uh, just make sure you keep track of the rhyming and the number of lines. Tip number three, play with sound repetition, such as alliteration, because that can actually help you add texture to the poetry that you are writing. And lastly, tip four, 
Keep a notebook handy with a dictionary of rhyming words so that you can use it to help you in case you get stuck thinking of a rhyme. Once you have your poetry prompt written, I would love to read it. So if you want to share it with me, I would be, gr I would be so grateful to be able to help you with that. Uh, you can hit me up on Instagram and X at GKJ underscore publishing, or you can email me at gkjpublishing at gmail.com. I would love to offer you some feedback. Hey, thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe and click the bell for notifications when new content is released. Make sure to tune in in two weeks for my live stream, and I look forward to next month's episode featuring an interview with author S.M. Swarlow and new book recs from podcast host Stephanie Gowan. Merry Christmas, everybody.